Hi, what's up everyone? This is Bo Pen. If you are watching this video, you must have watched my other two videos, actually three, on the overviews of SOS Notebook and SOS Workflow Engine. And on the surface, there are two quite different products. SOS Notebook is a multi-language notebook environment based on Jupyter, and SOS Workflow Engine is a test-based workflow engine. And and you might be wondering what are the relationship between between them. So actually, while I was uh, showing you all the features of SOS using a the text editor, I was kind of lying because those are not the usual way you use SOS. The recommended way, actually, the power of the SOS workflow engine is you to use SOS inside SOS Notebook. That's what I'm uh, I was going to show you today. So let's get started. So in this directory, you see that uh, this is the files that we created uh, yesterday. So we have the input file, that's Excel file, and then we have the uh, Python script and R script and and uh, SOS workflow engine. So that that's let's just start a Jupyter notebook. Okay, make it larger. And let's just repeat what we have done yesterday, but inside the SOS notebook. So we create a SOS a notebook server. And then when we are trying to uh, do uh, perform our analysis, we first because this is the Python, we can uh, uh, we can perform the analysis interactively inside a SOS cell. For example, we can use Control Shift Enter to to execute the, the this line in the side panel, and you can also do this. And then, if you uh, do the assignment in the side panel, it will automatically pre preview the results so that you know that you have correctly import the data. So this is the beauty of interactive data analysis because you have the instant feedback for whatever uh, analysis that you are doing. And then you can just okay per, uh, complete the analysis here. You create the CSV file. And then the next one is the R script. Let's just copy the R script here. Similarly, in SS Notebook, because it's a multi-language notebook, you can use whatever language that's supported. So you choose this is R, and then you can again, you can just uh, read this line, and start in R, and then the data is, is read into the R session, and you know it's correct, right? And then you can uh, do the same thing. It's really nice. Actually, you have seen that when you are do the plotting, you see the result instantly. That's the beauty of interactive data analysis. Okay, and then when you are done with this uh, analysis, you can rightfully do something like uh, insert a cell a uh, uh, verb, and then say my analysis. I just write something random. Basically, what I meant is that you can uh, this analysis just a, a convert a Excel file to CSV and the plot in R, and then you can even say I want to show the results so that I can preview dash n and say uh, or data. Something like this. So basically, this is your usual SOS notebook session, right? Because uh, after the analysis, you have all the scripts and you have all the results, and you have the long descriptions, which was really really helpful. And you can convert. Uh, basically, you can generate an HTML report from that. Then, if for whatever reason you need to use some workflow features of the SOS, basically, say if the dataset is too large to be analyzed interactively, or if you want to run multiple steps all together, if you or if you want to use the uh, signatures of SOS, then you can easily convert your interactive data analysis to a batch workflow. That's combination that easy. 
uh, transition is the real power behind SOS and SOS notebook. Let me show you what I meant. So basically, right now you have a Python script and it's executed by the Python kernel directly, which is the SOS kernel. But you can say convert that to a SOS action. So there's not much difference on the surface, but Previously, you are executing three statements in the kernel, but right now you are executing a shell, a, a Python script, okay, a complete script by Python, and you can do the same thing. You can actually run that, and for R, you can do the same thing. You just say this is R, and because the difference is that you are converting this piece to a SOS. Step, so you need to change the subkernel from R to SOS, and then you, you can execute that. So as you can see, the difference is that previously you are executing everything inside R, right, right now you are executing in SOS, okay, as a R action, uh, as a action. So anyway, right now if you, this is sometimes called a scratch step because this looks like a, a, a a SOS step but without headers and you can do the same thing like uh, you can say input is um, we can even define parameters that's the same thing dg list equals to dg list xsx and we can say input is dg list and output is the uh, dg list dot csv okay this is the same thing that we learned from the sos tutorial uh, basically this one if we have expand equal to two then we can replace this piece with the sos variables this is an underscore input and this is underscore output so this is more sos right this is then you, you can execute that without uh, any uh, change because this is uh, we, we are using the default value and then we have the input output expand over there but if we want to run that script run this workflow with a different parameter you can do run okay and then dg list uh, this is the parameter dg list equals to another we have that file right so basically we have just converted a a a, a an interactive data analysis into a workflow step just this is a one single step and for the R, we can do the same thing and what if we want to have a a a, a formal uh, workflow then what we need to do is this say we need a first if this is step 10 and this is step 20 so we have two steps and then we can say as well as wrong the workflow and uh, okay, fail the process input stem digitist and then digitist is not defined. Okay, so okay, the, the problem is that what SOS run does is that it goes through all the cells and finding all the SOS steps, okay? That's marked by a header, which is header this one and that one, but the parameter is not inside a header, so it's not included as a, a workflow. So DigiList is not defined. We can see this clearer if we use the preview. Say this is the preview workflow, and the workflow right now inside this notebook is the step 10 and step 20, and there's no definition over there. So what we need to do is, this is the global, and many times we can separate it into two cells. And in this case, 
if we do that, the, the workflow will have a global section, which is the parameter definition and the 10 and 20. Uh, in the text-based SI workflow, you can, you can ignore the global, but in the uh, SI notebook, you can't. That's the way uh, how SIS run collects steps and create a workflow. So in this case, we can do that. Okay, so um, as you can see that um, we can have many whatever workflow defined in the SS notebook and run them either as a single cell. So the difference between run and SS run is that run just execute the content of the cell as a workflow, just one single cell and SOS run will collect all workflow steps as a complete script and then run it. Okay, and in, in uh, and we can also define parameter here. That's that's not a difference. XL um, SX, and we can even say V three or V four. Just try to get the more output. So for example, for this one, and we have the input and output as executing those two steps, okay? Because of the uh, verbosity level. Also, I want to point out another difference in SOS uh, cell. So basically, previously when we have a cell like this without a header, we can actually directly in SOS, that basically like a Python statement. But if you add a header to here, then this cell becomes a formal SOS workflow step. In this case, if you execute this cell, it, it doesn't do anything. So basically, if you have steps, SOS steps with section headers, you have to run the content of the cell as a workflow using the magic run or SOS run. If it's part of the larger workflow, say this is run and then it will execute this as a single step workflow. So basically SOS notebook provides you an environment for interactive data analysis with multiple a language so that you can debug your scripts and then it also allows you to transfer your steps into a draft workflow so that you can debug your uh, workflow steps in the in the sense that you can debug your script like this and define variables and pass and pass them in something like you can say uh, a PDF file equals to result.pdf and then you can expand equals to true and you can do something like this just to uh, to debug your workflow. Okay, just just try to uh, make a a SOS step. Okay, then you can convert your step into a for into part of a formal workflow and execute in in using SOS run. So actually, the this workflow can also be executed from command line. For example, if we rename that is to something like just do workflow. And then let's come over here. And now we can see there's a workflow.ipymb. And then you can say SS wrong workflow. That will be the, the same as running the workflow using the SS wrong magic, which is very convenient if you have to run the script. A remotely say on a, on a cluster that you don't have a Jupyter server to open the notebook and, and execute the magic. Okay, so the last thing I want to show is that actually uh, in addition to all the um, interactive ways for you to, to de debug and develop your uh, data analysis and the workflow, the SOS notebook also provides some visual feedback for things like, let me show you. Say for example, if you decide to run the script as a task and we run it, you will see that 
the task was displayed like this. And you can actually see all the all the details of your task if you click on that. And that is easier than using commands like SR status and the uh, to to get the all the information. And it can actually show you a a figure with the CPU and the memory usage uh, in in real time. So this is something really useful if you are running, for example, a large number of tasks on the cluster. Because in this case, you can even say run a dash Q to a workstation. Right now, I don't have the connection to my office uh, uh, desktop, so this can be run. But the idea is that if you have this, then the ta if you click this button, it will uh, connect to your office the desktop or cluster and show you the status of your task over here, which is very convenient. Uh, I, th I think this will conclude my introduction to SOS and SOS Notebook. Thank you very much for watching.